Liberty Schools Board of Education special meeting number 1550 is now called to order. Dr. Lake, do I have any changes to the agenda? We do not. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Motion by Jen. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion carries. Uh, 4.0, we have two consent items on the agenda. Uh, does anyone wish to pull either of these for individual consideration? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion to approve consent agenda items 4.01 to 4.02 as presented? So moved. Motion by Megan, second. Second. Second by Matt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, individual action items. Um, we do have one this evening. It's a school calendar update. Dr. Smart. So what you have before you is a change to the end of our school year. I think it's important to note as you look at the calendar and moving the last day of school to May 20th, that that is still with us having a significant number of hours above what the state required minimum is. Um, it's actually our calendar is built with a significant number of, of extra hours and days in order to ensure that we're able to accommodate any, any weather events during the course of the school year. So when we look at this calendar and this change, we are looking at at, um, the fact that we, even ending on May 20th, are um, over the minimum expectation by about three instructional days for our students. Um, and that's at the, the tightest margin. Um, in some cases, at some of our levels, we're looking at five or six days of instruction still available, even with um, over the, the DESE minimum requirement. Do I have a motion? Turn that on. Do I have a motion to approve the 2021-2022 school calendar update as presented? So moved. Motion by Christy. Second? Second. Second by Megan. Uh, any other questions or discussion? Okay. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. 6.0 resolutions. Uh, we do have two this evening. So 6.01 is the resolution honoring the candidates for the Board of Education uh, this particular um, election. So I'll read that aloud. Whereas the Lindbergh Schools Board of Education is made up of seven members who serve staggered terms of three years each, and whereas district residents David Randleman, Jennifer Miller, Carrie Clay, and Julia Voss filed for the three-year terms of office, and whereas their willingness to serve on the school board is an expression of the highest interest in educational welfare of Limburg's youth. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education commends David Randleman, Jennifer Miller, Carrie Clay, and Julia Voss for their continued interest and support in Limburg schools and the education of all students for their willingness to volu voluntarily serve the people of the Limburg community. All right, thank you for that. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution of appreciation honoring the candidates for the Board of Education? Second. Motion by Mike, second by Kathy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion carries as well. So 6.02 um, is a resolution in appreciation of Mike Tischler's service to the Limburg community and, and school district. So, Mike, if I could perhaps have you stand, and I'll read the motion. <clears throat> Maybe catch my breath here yeah. for a second. Then. All right. <clears throat> Whereas Dr. Mike Tischlis was elected to the Limburg Schools Board of Education in April 2016 and faithfully served students, staff, and families in the Limburg community as a Board of Education director for six years, three of which he served as board treasurer. And whereas Mike additionally served on many committees, including employee salary, teaching and learning, finance, facilities, and technology. And whereas Mike received the Distinguished Board Member Certification to the Missouri School Board Association and served as a St. Louis Region Chair of MSBA, as well as the MSBA delegate and alternate. And whereas Limburg Schools 
is a better district as a result of Mike's contribution to the Board of Education. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Board of Education extends their sincere thanks to Dr. Mike Tischler for his dedication to youth and education and for the sacrifices he made during his two terms as Lindbergh School's Board of Education Director. We just want to say thank you, Mike. We have a plaque here memorializing Mike's service to the board, and um, the last four years have been awesome working with you, and so we wish you the best of luck in all future endeavors, and um, I appreciate you doing the motion to uh, recommend to hire me, so thanks, thanks for that. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank everybody. Um, you know, uh, six years uh, just kind of comes and goes, it seems. Uh, you know, I remember when I first came on and, you know, the various, oh, I guess issues that were presenting itself to the district at the time, uh, which were, I mean, actually very different than some of the ones we've been dealing with recently. But throughout this whole time, and I have to say, um, with all sincerity, because I know my fellow board members, um, you know, a few of whom have stepped down already since I first came on, more than a few, uh, have always acted in a very collegial manner with one another. Uh, you know, we may have disagreements at times. Uh, we might not come to a full consensus, although we always work towards consensus. I'm looking at a new board member. We work towards consensus. Okay, but you know, uh, even so, if it if that doesn't always happen, you know, we're still respectful of one another, and I've always appreciated that. Uh, I think um, that's the kind of environment we want to continue as we go down the road, and uh, and I'm sure that that's going to happen here. And I wish everybody here the best of luck uh, as they move forward and they go into this new phase. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I don't know what to say now. I'm just kind of overwhelmed a bit. So, uh, but thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate it and appreciate the time I've had to get to know you, the district, the students and families, the teachers, everybody. Okay. It's, uh, it's meant a lot to me. And of course, I, I raised a son through this district. Uh, and, um, he was able to accomplish things that um, he might not have without the support that he got in this district uh, from teachers and staff. And uh, uh, my family, my wife and I, of course, will, will always remember that. So again, thank you all. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Mike. Your service is commendable and the years you put in very much. Um, as a matter of business, do I have a motion to approve the resolution of appreciation honoring Dr. Mike Tischler? So moved. Second. Motion by Jen, second by Kathy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 7.0, um, this is a uh, receipt of the election returns and uh, declaring the results, it was duly noted that in the manner of providing for the annual school board election held on Tuesday, April 5th, 2022, notice of said election was given in accordance with the laws of the state of Missouri. The board thereupon received the report of said election and ascertained the results of said election to be <clears throat> David Randleman received 4,221 votes, 22.84%. Jennifer Miller received 5,031 votes, 27.22%. Carrie Clay received, received 4,174 votes, 22.59%. And Julia Voss received 5,055 votes, which was 27.35%.
Given that, do I have a motion to declare Jennifer Miller and Julia Voss the elected directors of the Lindbergh Schools Board of Education for three years as indicated? So moved. Motion by Megan. Second. Second, second by Matt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Now we'll have Jennifer and Julia join uh, Madam Secretary, Christy Watts, in front of the dais for the oath of office. Yeah. Okay. I'm bringing my paper because I'm a little nervous and I don't want to mess up. Why are you nervous? But I drove my family crazy. They're all sworn in school board members. So. <laughs> okay. Ladies ready? I believe you have to raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I state your name. <laughs> Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Missouri. Thank you. And I will, to the best of my ability, faithfully and impartially, discharge the duties of a member of the Lindbergh Schools Board of Education of the State of Missouri, of of State State of Missouri. Missouri, according to the law, so help me God. According to the law, so help me God. Fantastic. Congratulations. This time, Jen will take her seat. We'll ask Julia to join us in the dance. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> okay, at this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Lake for election of president and vice president. Sure. So at this time, I will temporarily serve as the chair of the board um, as the board reorganizes itself for the upcoming um, year. And so with that, um, do I have a nomination for president um, for the school board at this time? I would like to nominate Jennifer Miller. Second. 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 Did you get that? Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, any comments? If not, we can vote. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Carries. Now, at this time, do I have a nomination for Vice President of the Board of Education? Uh, I nominate Christy Watts. I accept. <laughs> let's, let's follow our rules, second. Please. I accept the nomination. Yeah. Second. Who second that? Kathy second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Now, at this time, I will turn it over to Madam President, Ms. Miller. Alright, so item 9.03, election of a secretary. Do I have a motion for a nomination for secretary of the Board of Education? I would like to nominate Megan Vetter. And a second? Second. Right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, opposed? All right, 9.04, election of a treasurer. Do I have a motion of nomination for treasurer of the Board of Education? I would like to nominate Matt Alonzo. All right, Matt, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mike. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right. So now we need to uh, MS, MSBA delegate and alternate. Each year, the Limburg Board appoints an MSBA delegate and alternate. Uh, Ms. Christy Watts currently serves as the MSBA delegate, and Dr. Mike Tishelis was serving as the alternate. Do I have a motion to appoint? Christy Watts to serve as the MSBA delegate, and Megan Vetter to serve as the alternate. So moved. All right. I have a second. Second. All right. Any discussion or questions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Okay. At this time, we 
already completed our executive session, so therefore a recess is not needed, and we will now move to 12.0 adjournment. 12.0, this includes our special meeting, 1550. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All right, so first by Kathy, second by Christy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, special board meeting, 1515 is adjourned. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> So before we start the next meeting, if you want to get some pictures with your family, um, so if the Voss family's out there, if you guys want to come forward, we'll do that. Jen, this is your My third term. Your not family's here. not here, so <laughs> it's not. They're busy it's all right. this evening. Okay, so Julia, like, well, yeah, what, well, everybody, if you're here for the workshop, we're just going to take a little pause and get some pictures, and then we will get started here in about five minutes. We'll be fast. Thanks. Okay. All right, well, the Limburg Schools Board of Education Special Workshop 1551 is now called to order. Dr. Lake, do we have any changes to the agenda? We do not. All right. Approval of agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Christy, second by Mike. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes 7-0. Discussion topics. Item 4.01, our 2022 learning report, and I will turn it over to Dr. Tara Sparks and our building principals to present their learning reports. Well, before I um, turn it over to our principals, um, I just want to take a walk down memory lane a little bit to 2018 and our listening and learning reports, our, I'm sorry, listening and learning um, presentations that Dr. Lake um, participated in with, I believe, what was it, 88 various ones, 83? I was close. It was very close. Um, where we gained a lot of feedback from our community, our students, our families, um, community members, staff, about how we measure student success. And there were 12 measurements that um, families were asked to weigh in on as to what really demonstrates student success for the future. And as a result of that survey, um, we've identified five characteristics that really demonstrate our success that we've been using as a measure for these learning reports since then. So you can see on the screen right there, high quality teachers, um, number one unanimously across, across the board from our stakeholders. The social and emotional well-being of students and staff, student mastery of the four C's, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. Personalized learning for staff and students and student satisfaction. So what you'll hear tonight from our principals and our program leaders are um, experiences that our students have related to these areas. Tonight's focus is really going to be on that evidence of the experiences our students have in our schools. And then at our July board workshop, we are going to focus on the data analysis. So the teaching and learning team will be providing the um, growth data, the reflective data from our student progress and learning over the course of this year. So it's at this time, I'm going to invite our first four principals to come to the um, to the area up front. Um, and if you can go to the next slide, Colin, we have Dr. Charlene Ziegler, who will be beginning our presentations. Now, they've all been told five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. So um, I'm going to secretly time them and not put too much pressure on them, actually. Um, but Dr. Ziegler is going to begin and talk about early childhood education.
for allowing me to share a few examples about the practices that are happening at ECE, which ensure that our students are not just ready for kindergarten, but ready for a lifetime of learning. The examples that I've chosen below are aligned with our compass goals and exemplify our why. Next slide. This year, we were so happy to be able to return to a sense of normalcy. We needed to refresh our universal practices after the restrictions during the last couple of years. Universal practices are our commitment to each student that they will receive these foundational supports and resources in every environment that they work within. My examples this year are supporting friendships with friend portraits, updating and refreshing our school-wide universal expectations for every student, and professional learning in the area of Tier 1 universals. On this slide, we have our friend portraits. Our friend portraits, which are outlined in black, so you can see those, help as we talk about what behaviors make one a good friend. Our universal expectations posters with the green border help us all to remember how we have chosen to work and behave together. And finally, in the picture with the yellow border, you can see a scavenger hunt that we use for professional learning to find the best social emotional practices in individual classrooms. Slide. You can see here um, one of our school rules books. Remember that our students typically do not read, um, so pictures are really important to them. This book is read aloud very regularly so that these rules are embedded into our culture. The rules are centered on our school-wide expectations of be respectful, be safe, and be friends. When students know the expectations, they gain confidence and agency that they use throughout their learning day. Next slide. The four C's are, of course, part of what we do every day. This classroom is creating elements of the story, the three Billy Goats Gruff, for which they have had read-alouds in many different versions of the books. In the pictures, you can see the students creating a river and grass mural, and also some novel engineering with bridge building structures independently that go along with that book. Next slide. In the area of communication, we are highlighting the communication boards that we have in our classrooms and on our playgrounds for our nonverbal children. These help our students to gain greater skill in other areas while they're acquiring their verbal skills. It's easy for a nonverbal student to not feel control, and this helps to mitigate those feelings while increasing the student's confidence. For our older students, in the picture with the blue border, they're learning to communicate who they are with their own self-portraits. They mix the colors themselves, and they paint the characteristics that they see in, in themselves using mirrors as they choose. Next slide. We are rich with collaboration in our shared campuses of Lindbergh High School and Truman Middle School. We join for projects throughout the school year. The pictures on this slide include a class project and a service day. In addition, we have regular weekly class visits with the high school and ongoing service from Truman Middle School. Next. For critical thinking, our highlight project is built around a book about different homes throughout the world. We can learn about other cultures and how people live in other parts of the world while talking about our own homes. You can see in the pictures that we classified, solved, investigated, and created these homes in our classrooms. And finally, personalized learning. We have so many examples of personalized um, individual methods for students. Uh, to learn self-regulation skills and other executive functions. These are really just a few. The pictures shown here focus on students learning how to ask for what they need, how to follow a schedule, and how to regulate their emotions during their difficult times. Any questions? OK, then I want to turn this. Oh. Are we ever thinking of expanding on to Spearing Middle School? Because I love the partnership stuff, what you're explaining about Truman and the high school. Just passing it along to my partners Yay. here. I First, I'm going to pass it along to Dr. Eric Cochran, Lindbergh High School's principal. Good evening. I have five minutes, and it's going to take me three minutes to figure out how to use this quicker. <laughs> but I'm going to try, Colin, so that you don't have to do it. Okay. 
Um, first of all, I want to thank the board for all of your support through what has been uh, an amazingly difficult two years uh, and all the things, all the successes that you're going to see in these uh, photos that I'm going to show are a direct result of the phenomenal teachers and staff that we have at Lindbergh High School who have really worked hard to uh, bring some sense of normalcy back to our students. And that really has been, yes, uh, that really has been the uh, theme of this year. We, we talked a lot at the beginning about how our goal was to try to put things back in place that we have had to take away from our students due to COVID. And so I'm not going to talk about every one of these photos. I'm just going to show you a lot of photos of students doing things that high school sh students should be doing. And that is, uh, to me, one of the best examples of social emotional learning that we can provide at our school. And so we had the return of dances, assemblies, uh, athletics with fans, uh, musicals without masks, uh, the ability to uh, recently go without masks at the high school has had Another uh, has been another shot in the arm for our uh, morale and for our culture at the high school. So um, it's been very gratifying to see students having the types of experiences that they really want to have in a high school. So I'll just go through some of these and really just we had to we had to be a little creative at times. We had to have our homecoming outside, but our kids loved our outdoor homecoming out on the turf. Uh, and, and just seeing these, these experiences and, and some of the things that our students were able to do to celebrate um, being flyers was, was very gratifying for, for all of us. Um, still, I, I think the key ingredient to our social emotional learning that it's hard to remind ourselves that we still have not been through an entire school year of Power Lunch because our first effort was interrupted by COVID. Last year, we were not able to have any Power Lunch, but we returned to Power Lunch this year and it is just as popular with our students as it was when we last tried it and they're actually quite a bit better better at it than they used to be as well um, this is probably the best place where we can see those student success skills taking place because students are able to on a daily basis practice agency go and get help from teachers when they need it to behave with integrity because there's a lot of times in power lunch where Kids are doing things that adults don't see, and so we rely upon them to live up to our expectations, and 99% of the time, they do just that. Uh, and it's also one of our most inclusive parts of being in high school, as exhibited by our, uh, our clubs, uh, where we have 62 clubs that all meet during the school day, which means more students can participate. And we had the equivalent of 64% of our population participating in some form of club at the high school this past year. And uh, there's not much more that can help your culture uh, than that. The, the one picture I do want to highlight is the one on the bottom left, which doesn't look like much, but that is actually a new introduction for us as well, and that is the introduction of the, the Flyers Nation app, which we used to gamify some of our school culture this year. We wanted students to really get excited uh, and get involved. We just had our battle of the classes last week, so students, by participating in several different things over the course of the year could uh, actually earn points for their class. The seniors won, so they were very excited. But that has been another fun way to integrate technology and to make it exciting to be a high school student. Uh, similarly, when it comes to academics, our goal was to return to the type of uh, learning that we were used to seeing prior to COVID. And so when I get a chance to see students working in close proximity, doing experiments, doing creative things in the classroom, sprawl down the floor with their teacher, um, working on in collaborative groups, I get even more excited knowing that next year they're going to be doing it in a building that was designed for that. So this is just the first step. Even in spite of COVID, I was very proud that the class of 2021 had the highest ACT score that we've had in 10 years. And then finally, personalized learning. Um, we are still seeing the culmination of a lot of work uh, in our school, uh, working with central office and teaching and learning department to try to offer uh, personalized, really personalized pathways for our students so that every single student gets the pathway that is right for them. Uh, for a lot of our students, that will be preparation for college, but for many of them, that will be jumping into college right now while they are in high school. It'll be joining CAPS. Uh, it'll be working in an internship or performing more of a hands-on activity where they're actually doing that work in their classroom. 
And um, the, the top left picture there is a, a picture of one of our students who is in our gifted program who created an interactive jukebox where he designed it so that if you were able to do things in a certain order, it would actually play, play music. And he designed that entirely on his own. And then um, I know we were celebrated here uh, in the bottom right photo for our um, work with Merrimack and, uh, and, and St. Louis Community College and how many students have been impacted by our expanded dual credit program, uh, how many dollars have been saved for our families because of these opportunities. And we are really proud of the many students we have in our early college program. So really excited about the things that are happening in the high school, even during some of the most difficult times. And when we get into that new building next year, we're just going to continue to take off from there. What questions might you have? Tara, how did I do? Five minutes? It was, it was like, yeah, it was, it was easily. Easily 458, easily. Yeah. It was great. I was just going to say, I love the word pathway. Yeah. When you said that, that was Thank great. Too. All right. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Strotman, Mike Strotman from Truman. Oh, you already have that. Yes. Check. Okay. Love microphones. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Dr. Cochran. It's certainly exciting to hear about the awesome things that are going on at the high school. Uh, thank you, board, for allowing us to uh, share with you tonight some of the exciting things happening at our school. Um, it's always an honor to share um, the exciting learning that's occurring uh, based on the challenging work that our staff are doing with our students on a daily basis at Truman. Um, so tonight, I'm going to start out by talking about um, social-emotional learning. Uh, this has been uh, a very important part of our work over the last three years. Uh, excuse me, uh, building uh, upon things that we were doing pre-COVID to things that we were doing virtually and uh, trying to then apply all of those things to a full year of in-person uh, really has been rewarding to see the work our staff are doing. Um, so getting back to uh, what we've done instructionally to support students has been one of the really big highlights of us and getting into our work with the four C's, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, by providing instruction that really supports collaboration among students and staff. Um, but um, So what I'll start out with is the picture in the top right really has been an added break space for students. What we've found is providing students an opportunity to de-escalate or uh, take breaks to kind of reset has really been important to the work of getting kids back into the classroom to the state of mind of being able to work and be effectively working in the classroom. So this is one of the two spaces we have at Truman, uh, really focused on self-awareness, social awareness. Those are really big things for middle school in general, uh, but certainly um, have been important for our work. Um, our staff certainly always making sure students are ready to learn and have a supportive school in place to do so. Safe schools are the foundation for learning, so we'll talk about some other pieces here that are important as a part of that. You know, our focus on educating the whole child um, has been kind of highlighted by the bottom left picture, where uh, this is a group in a restorative circle. Um, some of our student leaders working through relations, relationship skills, things like that, to help uh, build their ability to interact with others in a school setting. Uh, the middle at the bottom is a flight crew leader lesson. These leaders facilitate lessons to their peers, which has got to be about the most difficult thing you can do at that age. Uh, maybe other than singing in the choir in front of your peers. <laughs> Might be a little more challenging. but. Um, so really our, our focus on Character Strong lessons has continued this year, really prioritizing decision making and, and things like that at the middle school level. Um, certainly all of these opportunities have been successful in creating more opportunities for students to have a voice in their uh, school experience, which has been a real big priority of ours. Our next slide is going to be focused on uh, meaningful work that we're doing with students in terms of four C's. Um, the collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and collaboration has been a priority of ours for the last few years. Uh, what you'll see here in the bottom left is an example of students who are at a learning experience uh, in Forest Park. 
They actually brought their iPads out to Forest Park, were able to use those iPads offline with some documents they were working on, came back to Truman to kind of curate and create uh, some feedback to students and share their learning with others. So that was a really awesome piece. Uh, the two bottom pictures are an example of um, social studies um, in eighth grade, social studies artifact creation. Students were tasked with using modern tools uh, such as our laser printer and 3D printers in our design lab to design something historically accurate for solving problems. So uh, as you can see here, one of our students is working with us uh, or with one of our staff members to try to work through their design. Um, top right picture uh, shows uh, after spring break here we have an interdisciplinary unit we're currently still working through uh, with ELA and science in sixth grade. Uh, for the past two years this team of teachers has been working uh, participating in a study through Mizzou uh, with connecting literacy and science together. Uh, their mission was to take the human body unit and give it some real-world context while helping students develop the skills uh, to accurately read uh, and research uh, research-based text and make a claim uh, supported by evidence and reasoning. Uh, middle at the top is a really uh, cool new unit this year, sixth grade bird beak uh, design lab. Uh, this is where students were given um, a task to create and critically think uh, to build a bird beak prosthetic. Uh, these prosthetics were designed with actual bird beak structure and function in mind. So they were to pick a bird out and then design a beak that replicated that and then share their learning with um, others. Uh, they had guests come in and we, we learned from students, but it was a really cool opportunity for students to design and then share learning as a part of the entire process. So that was uh, really fun. Um, you know, Truman has really uh, embraced finding ways to innovate their lessons in the last few years, specifically just asking teachers to look at their lessons through a different lens to find uh, really great engaging ways of getting kids uh, focused in class and, and working toward their classroom goals. Uh, personalized learning, uh, we've been focused on trying to get students and adults uh, learning opportunities. So uh, we've been we've engaged staff and and cohorts of teachers with the Apple coaches and trainers uh, for this entire school year, really with uh, taking a look at their current lessons and finding ways to tweak those uh, to utilize the uh, implementation of technology. One of these lessons um, that then transferred to the classroom was this muscle challenge. This was done through our PE department. Um, you can see on the right side of the screen an example of a student who's used tech tools to create videos and photos to show where specific muscles are and also highlight which specific exercises develop those muscles. Um, so, And then also they were tying that into their specific growth plan of what they need to do uh, to grow individually as well uh, for their personal strength. Um, Bottom left, you can also see uh, seventh grade science teachers also used laser cutters uh, to, to design elements, showing the proper number of protons, neutrons, and electrons to scale using sketch school on their iPads. And then their drawings were then etched into wood on our laser cutter, which represented their learning uh, and understanding of the topic. Um, then they shared this with their peers. So really incorporating a lot more this year of interactions with peers again, uh, working in groups, which has been really exciting to see. So um, I just want to end this presentation by thanking uh, the board for their ongoing support uh, of our students and staff. Um, your support in retaining high quality staff, providing resources for learning, and uh, just overall investment in our schools is truly making a difference. So thank you very much. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Sparing Middle School's principal. After questions, but I'm sure there are none. <laughs> Any questions? Sorry. I forgot that last year, too, if you didn't notice. Dr. Lauren Boger. All right, thank you and good evening. Um, I can't say enough before I get started. Just thank you for those who have gone before me and 
Charlie Boger can now dunk because of power lunch at the high school. So uh, good stuff happening. And Augie can fish now from your field trip. So thank you all for your collaboration. Um, as we present tonight, um, it truly is an honor to speak on behalf of Sparing Middle School, our students and staff um, in a brief presentation. Um, if I forget, this is an open invitation to you all to stop by and see this awesome learning in action. So let's take a look at excellence in learning and designing the future at Sparing Middle School. One thing I want to make sure everyone is kind of aware of is our compass goals for sparing that are founded on sparing life, innovation, and instructional design, best grading practices, and personalized assessment with that foundation of communication and two-way ongoing format. So those align to our goals from the feedback that Dr. Sparks mentioned earlier as district-wide goals as well. So let's take a look at sparing life. Let's not forget, um, you know, thank you to our staff once again again for this being the heart of our work this year with Compass Goals and Sparing Life coming back um, to, to more normalcy from COVID life and learning. As you look at this slide, um, there are some features here that I want to explain. The top left is something that has come out of our middle school redesign and our flyer time, which is incorporating something we call more of a win time or flex time. So in that top left, it talks about how students are utilizing the flexible time during win time for reteaching, relearning, and reassessment, and, in, and extension activities for challenge. On the top right, I would like to also highlight a group that is student-led. It is called our ECHO group. It stands for our Equity Committee to Helping and Honoring Others, and we will be showcasing that at a regional event next month in May. So you got to stop by and check that out as well. Two Schools, One Book, we collaborated with Truman Middle School during flyer time for a read aloud, and it aligns perfectly with our Character Strong curriculum as well. On the bottom right, we also, um, ongoing feedback and student satisfaction was paramount during a redesign year. So if you look at that survey, you can tell what students are wanting out of flyer time, and we specifically ask them, am I getting what I need from my flyer time experience. As we look at innovation and instructional design, uh, this was a very hard one for me to, to choose a few. Um, so we did ask our staff to go through this entire process as a staff and highlight their learning moments from the year. And we landed here. So if you look to the left, creation is everywhere. So with the iPads, um, students are actually hanging green fabric in hallways to record, to create, and use their voice in classes. So that image is just awesome to see. Um, not long ago, we, we did not have iPads and we're not one-to-one. -one. In the middle there, our new librarian, Emily Hines, um, brought learning to life in a po poetry slam, collaborating and creating and having our students have a real and relevant uh, peer audience. And our staff on the top left, there's Miss Kelly Rebhan, also joining in in our poetry slam. And that creativity really shines um, through a unit in science design where they had to explore what aspects astronauts need in outer space. And that figure there, if you're wondering, ask a sixth grader that is known as a chow. It's a cross between a chicken and a cow. When you also think about innovation and instructional design, there's me. Um, ongoing student feedback was, again, paramount this year. So in eighth grade, we did a student forum, press conference style, and they fired questions at me and asked me about what's going to happen, how are things going with redesign, what about the eighth grade dance. I mean, very, very important questions to eighth graders. So it was a great uh, speaking and learning, and I was quoted in the um, sparing scoop as well. So they used utilize their journalism skills. And there's another example of, uh, are we looking at our modified block? And that was one question um, that came up during the press conference about block schedule. And finally, best grading practices and personalized assessment. Um, we, we wanted to highlight this, this image here on the right, and it's very important if you are not aware, NWEA um, assessments are an ongoing thing that we do at the middle school level, right? So we do that three times a year. But this image is, is a placeholder for you to know that our instructional design coach, Kelly Horalik, has done a phenomenal job collaborating with our departments and going in and using this format to set goals 
students with our students for their growth. So when we look at data or we move forward into July and our meeting there and we're digging deeper into the data, just know that our students are really looking at these categories, aligning them and getting ongoing feedback on how they're doing with their standards and celebrating those growth measures as well. So um, also kind of highlighted there uh, the podcast and garage band, which was a feature from our Apple coaching. Our, we had a handful of teachers utilize Apple coaches and will be a great recommendation to continue that moving forward. So as we, we continue to look to next year, like I said, just um, stop by anytime. You all are welcome. And thank you so very much. Any questions for sparing? It's, it's a chicken and, and a cow combined. Yes. All right. They can hear me. It's really neat to see through the NWA the growth and like the numbers of how that matches up. So I'm excited to continue with that work. But yeah, for everybody. Thank you. All right, next we have our new wave of amazing administrators, <laughs> starting with Dr. Takesha Parker. And as they come up, I think it's a good time for me to point out that, you know, in narrowing these to five minutes, there are so many things that our principals could highlight about what's happening in schools. So we've really worked to try to balance what you see um, across all of our buildings. So you'll see some data components. You'll see um, other elements that are maybe universal at all schools, but you're only hearing them at a few. So just a good point of clarification. Dr. Parker? All right, I'm starting my timer. I am so excited to share with you about the great things that continue to happen at Sappington. And please understand that this is just a snapshot. So I invite all of you to come and tour Sappington. I will personally not give the tour. Our students will because I think it's important for you to hear from them, hear their voices, and hear what they value from Sappington. So with that, we are very intentional about capturing our student voices um, at Sappington. So um, the bottom wordles last school year in May when we were preparing for the transition of bridging students who participated in ARC and students who um, remained in person, we captured the voices of every single Sappington kindergarten through fifth grade. We asked them a series of five questions and we captured their um, their answer. So I included three of those questions on this slide. So again, we're very intentional about capturing the voices of our students. With that, we have two classrooms who participated in our furniture pilot, and they were able to rotate through different um, flexible seating options and be able to offer their input and their feedback on the best ways that they um, like to learn and collaborate with each other. I have to give credit to our teachers this year where they took advantage of grant opportunities as well as professional learning opportunities. So we had two teachers who represent our special school district staff that wrote a grant that benefits all Sappington students. So they wrote a grant to create sensory break spaces for each of our grade levels. So any student can you utilize these break spaces and they have um, a set of directions, set of activities, and it's to honor what they need at that moment. Again, this is open um, opportunity for every single Sappington student. And we also had some teachers who participated in the restorative practices professional learning last summer led by Dr. Mapp. And they came back just really inspired on how they can empower the voices of our students. So we have students participate in classroom circles where they are able to check in each morning with their voice. And a couple of years ago, I shared how we were implementing zones of regulation school wide. So they're also able to continue to identify which zone they are starting their morning in and that's a way for students to be uh, to be able to honor their classmates and where they are at that moment um with our four c's we had teachers come back from arc to in person and be able to um, take away what they learn and this is um 
I want to say the beginning of what Sappington could be, what it can be, and that's being able to realize that our students should not be learning within a box. So we have students who are utilizing their speech skills, their communication skills by providing authentic experiences for them, um, as you see with our Sappington Brew Crew. We also have teachers who are allowing their students to showcase their learning, um, their research not in your traditional projects with presentations, but creating podcasts to show their learning. And the students are engaged, they're creating their own content, and they're very proud of their work, and it's something that they can hang on to beyond their years at Sappington. We also had teachers that brought back the opportunities to partner with um, the St. Louis Aquarium, St. Louis Zoo, so providing virtual field trips to all of our um, classes and all of our students and be able to collaborate with with those in that field. Um, we have two fifth graders who started a podcast this year called SAP Seconds. If you click on that QR code, we ask that you subscribe. They are always looking for new followers. And this is something that they are leading on their own. Every week, they create their own content. They uh, create their own scripts, they create their own questions, and they invite special guests to come in and participate. So they are extremely proud of it. They are currently holding auditions to fourth graders to see who would carry it over for next school year. Again, we have teachers who are utilizing grants, so they are providing a hydroponic garden. So that's, again, hands-on experience for our students. If you look at the bottom right picture, I want to highlight a kindergarten teacher who taught in art class last year. And she has her kindergarten students using Canvas this year. So kindergartners can use Canvas and they are able to personalize their own learning through that platform. Uh-uh, I have one more. I have one more. Um, and then let me wrap up. I do have to just really acknowledge our teachers and their hard work. Sappington Lindbergh could not be what Lindbergh is without the dedication and the efforts of all of our teachers. So I have teachers who are personalizing their own learning with the book study. I have a group of six teachers who meet monthly um, looking at um, strategies and practices and discussions around culturally responsive teaching. A couple of weeks ago, I had three teachers participate in a three-day response to intervention summit, and it was nice for them to reserve the room here at CO and they were able to collaborate, super excited about what they are learning and they are excited to take it back to our Sappington staff to see how we make sure that we are meeting the needs of our students, all of our Sappington students. So again, this is just a snapshot. I invite you to come over, hear the voices from our students, hear what they're proud of, hear what they are implementing to make Sappington the best place for them and the best place that they can learn. Now I am going to pass it over to Dr. Christina Phillips, principal of Long Elementary. All right, Colin, I'm going to have you do my oh, slides. I just don't even want to mess with that. <laughs> things. It'll throw, I didn't practice with it, so it'll throw me off. All right. All right, first, thank you to the board for allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight about the wonderful things happening at Long Elementary. Next slide, Colin. Thanks. I am proud to share the work that our staff and students have done this year to fo foster our social emotional learning and well being of all students and staff at Long Elementary. Community building has always been important to us at Long. This year, we introduced the One Book, One School initiative. One Book, One School is the idea of the entire school reading the same book at the same time. We chose to read the one and only Ivan. This project was a way to develop and maintain positive relationships and a sense of belonging. The year prior, we had 120 plus students and 10 teachers who are not in our physical building because they were participating in ARC. The experience of reading a common book brought our school community back together. The book led to spirit weeks, a coin drive, and eventually Long Elementary adopted a silverback gorilla, Joe, at the St. Louis Zoo. To, on the top right, you can see our kindness cart. Kindness cart can be seen in the long hallways every Friday. The cart is not only something for teachers to enjoy, but the kindness cart develops communication skills for students at Long Elementary and fosters the inclusive environment at Long. 
Thanks to the Limburg Foundation for providing us a grant to help maintain this initiative. The bottom left picture shows our library make and take kits, which are new this year. At Long, we are committed to creating a culture that is inclusive and provides experiences for all children and families. In an effort to provide these experiences to students and their families, the Long School Library provides make and take kits that are available for a week-long checkout. Each kit has a specific focus and all items included to facilitate the experience with families. On the bottom right pictures, you see the leadership roles at Long Elementary. These address our skills of identity and agency. We want students to identify their personal strengths and contribute to our school community. This happens on the school-wide level, as can be seen with our safety leaders, and also at the classroom level, and the picture at the bottom middle highlights the job application process in a third grade classroom. Next slide, please. The four C's continue to be embedded into everything we do at Long. This year, I'm very excited to highlight the collaboration between our art, music, PE, and library teachers. This PLC put together a superhero week for all grade levels. Students created superheroes, composed sound effect tracks, crafted superhero movements, and explored comics and graphic novels. In addition, music and art collaborated with fifth grade this spring to compose their own music score and make an album design on a vintage vinyl record. An example of critical thinking and communication can be seen at the bottom left picture. First grade students in Mrs. Rowe's class are participating in math talk. Ms. Rowe began this practice after attending a session during the district's next practices professional learning day. Students engage in discussion about multiple strategies to solve problems. All four C's are explored by students when they use our new imagination playground blocks. Students work together and communicate as they build and create structures. This can be seen in the bottom middle picture. And in the final picture, you can see a third grade student using Keynote to work on a project. We appreciate Colin David arranging the Apple trainers to come in and meet with our teachers. The creative work in Keynote is a direct result of this learning. Next slide, please. Finally, personalized learning and meeting students where they are is something we strive for at Long. Several years ago, we began implementing Win Time, What I Need. This is 20 to 30 minutes every day built into our master schedule. This is a time for interventions and enrichment. This has been an evolving process for us. Teachers do see the value in setting the specific time every single day. I have a quote from Tim Waters, and he didn't want me to put his picture, so that's his bitmoji. I have come to value win time wholeheartedly because it affords me extra time to provide enriched and or tier two instruction to my students across the content areas. It is now a sacred part of the day that allows me to hone in on carefully selected skills which provide a successful pathway to my diverse group of learners. In addition, I have included some pictures of our tier two and tier three interventions which can be seen on the top. First is our one of our first grade teachers, Meg Brady, working with students during wind time. I wanna highlight that our first grade team has worked very closely with our reading specialists to interpret data and diagnostic screenings that have occurred in K through three. They are using that data to individualize instruction for all of their students. On the top right, you can see Mrs. Rich, one of our reading specialists. She's working with a group of second grade students. Mrs. Rich has been trained in letters and OG methodology, and she's sharing that information and working with kids who need it. Finally, the bottom right picture is an example of extension activities that happen during wind time. These fourth grade students have created a game that is based on all the properties they had been working on in math. So with that, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. All right, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. DeAndre Thomas, Principal of Kennerly. Thank you very much. I'm pressing the button. Oh, yeah, there we go. It works. OK, you picked me up. So I'm sticking to my script because we have uh, five minutes, and I just want to make sure I get everything in my slide. So I'm going to stick to my script. So Colin, if you can, whenever I ask for a next slide, it'd be perfect. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm excited to share some incredible insights and opportunities that our students, staff, and our Kinderly community has had a chance to be a part of for the 21-22 school year. Kinderly has 
tremendous staff that actively seeks out professional learning experiences within the district and beyond that fosters academic achievement, growth and development, social and emotional advancements that supports the well-being of our students and staff. These learning experiences our Kennelly team has been a part of reflects qualities of highly invested teachers. Mr. Doyle, Kennerly's physical education teacher, attended the Missouri Society and Health Education Conference this past year. This conference allowed our physical education teachers or allowed physical education teachers from all over the state to share experiences, activities, and advice with their colleagues and efforts to better the physical education experience for all students. Being at the conference presented Mr. Doyle with new innovatives and new innovative and engaging activities that is used to improve our Kennerly physical education program. Uh, Mr. Nager, who's at the top left, um, completed a 30-day creative engineering course through monthly.com, which was hosted by YouTuber uh, and engineer Mark Rober. Uh, in 30 days, Mr. Nager designed and created three unique building and using the combination of mechanical and engineering. In addition to having some cool projects that he shared with his students, he was able to show them some of the video clips from his classes. Many of the students are familiar with Mark Rober and seeing someone who worked at NASA and Apple using the same practices that our students are learning in Design Lab has, has made a huge impact. Next slide, please. Another measure of high quality te teachers is that the fact that they use data to drive student instruction. Here we're looking at an NWEA growth report comparing fall and winter ELA performances in one of our fifth grade classes. We're looking to see that most students are in orange and green showing high growth. Orange are the students who might be approaching grade level but have made high growth since the fall. Green are students who are on or above grade level and have also made high growth, sorry, growth since the fall. Students in yellow are our high achievers and the students that are in red might need additional support and our intervention. Many of our students or many of our teachers use these reports to measure student progress with their stu with, throughout the course of the year. Sorry. Uh, next slide, please. Here we have an iReady diagnostic assessment of a third grade student. The diagnostic assessments are given in September, December, and March. The purpose is to assess the student's strengths and opportunities for growth in the four math domains, which is numbers and operation, algebra and algebraic thinking, measure and data, measurement and data, and geometry. After seeing the results of the September assessment, the classroom teacher provided small group and one-on-one -on -one support involving the parents with academic details and information, and also working with our ELL teacher for additional support. With the team partnership approach, the student began to understand the levels or the grade level skills. By March, by the March assessment, the student began to master grade level mathematical concepts. Next slide, please. New this year to Kennerly is our Kennerly Kudos Award, which is that special fine young man with the gray vest on down at the bottom. <laughs> if you ever come to Kennerly, you're going to see me wearing a vest pretty much all day. So my kids make fun of me all the time with it. So. New this year to, the, to Kennerly is the Kennerly Kudos. Receiving a Kennerly Kudos is definitely a highlight for students. In order to receive this accolade, students have to go above and beyond our Kennerly character traits. Kennerly Kudos are posted and displayed on a bulletin board where all can see. Awarded students have the option of sharing their accolade with the phone call home to a parent or guardian, taking a picture with the principal, or having the principal read a book to their class. Our Kennerly students love when they post their awards for all to see. Kennerly Elementary is very fortunate to have such an amazing parent group. This year, our parent organizations, PTP and DOK, have raised more than $25,000 to support Kennerly students and staff. With those funds, our PTP and DOK has awarded Kennerly teacher grants, will pay for fifth grade camp each year, provided breakfast and luncheons for our staff, and also provide opportunities for our staff members to attend conferences and trainings. Next slide, please. The four C's, communication, creativity, critical thinking, and collaboration is where our students and staff thrives. Our students, or sorry, our staff enjoy working with their team to assess data. It's common to walk into a classroom during a planning period of time and see teachers discussing data and how it's used to drive student instruction. I enjoy watching teachers strategically discuss student projects and incorporate multiple grade level standards. 
Using the four C's is how our students learn best, from brainstorming to creating projects, to talking ideas through with their peers, to trial and error, to keeping a journal, building models, making plans, comparing and contrasting, and research are just a few ways our students use this opportunity for the four C's. Next slide, please. I think our Kennerly students enjoy being a Kennerly kid. We definitely like to have fun. This school year, Kennerly had its first ever outdoor assembly, and boy, was it exciting. Um, we were fortunate to have a beautiful, warm, sunny winter afternoon to showcase our Kennerly celebrations right before we left for winter break. Our fourth and fifth grade students had a chance to show off their parade floats that they designed and that they constructed in a design lab. We, were, we celebrated with fun activities that students and teachers were able to join in. Our Kennerly community had an absolute blast on the last day of school before leaving for winter break. Are there any questions for Kennerly at this time? Excellent. Again, I'm not going to pause too long because I got to say. You still went over five minutes. <laughs> Was that under five minutes? Again, thank you very much for the opportunity to share the Kennerly highlights for the 21-22 school year. Next up, please welcome Dr. Pat Shenikes, principal of Dressel Elementary School. So since he uh, got into my time, I'm just going to flip through the pictures. If you have questions, we'll just go, go that route, all right? No, uh, just I'm excited once again to be here uh, to share just all the wonderful things that are going on at Dressel. You know, really a shout out to all the students and the staff at Dressel for, you know, coming off like some of my colleagues have mentioned just the last few years and uh, the challenges we've faced. Um, it's, you know, it was a, it's been a great year. So uh, next slide, Colin. Well, let me try this deal here. Lights, camera, action. All right. So uh, social emotional learning. So if I had a lot of time, this is probably where I would spend a majority of it. Um, you know, early on this year, recognizing that there were a lot of social emotional needs with our kids, um, having about 200 kids return back from ARC to Dressel, a uh, number of staff coming back. Um, you know, some of them for the, this is a first real school experience. And so uh, digging in deep into this area was really important to the students and to the staff. So I'm going to start in the upper left-hand corner. That is a, um, a chart that our second grade, a second grade teacher created. Her team recognized that during the day that the students were having a hard time getting into the green zone. And you might be asking what the green zone is. Well, the green zone is that optimal level for learning. And we want all students there um, prepared and ready to go. And so to help build some agency with her class, this teacher and her students, worked on some strategies that they could use during this time to, to get back into that green zone. So you can see uh, coloring, which some of you might be doing that right now, um, journaling, um, you know, different just I, I strategies to help really accomplish that goal of getting into the green zone. The next I want to jump over to the restorative practices. So this past school year, we had a, a handful of uh, teachers attend um, Dr. Mapp's professional learning on restorative practices. And one of the important things we were bringing to our school this year is that inclusiveness and that belonging to the, the entire school or your classroom. And so having, um, having some of our teachers go to this has, has really helped us achieve and work on that goal. Um, if you came to Dressel, you would see students in a, uh, a circle having a very intentional conversation in the mornings about some things that might be happening in the classroom. You might be seeing two kids that had a, a peer conflict out at recess, um, us working through a restorative conversation with them. And we've even used these with staff um, in circles. And so just, a, again, a great way to um, bring out that belonging, that inclusiveness at Dressel. Again, being a challenging year with um, the social emotional, uh, Dr. Albers this year led a, a book study on um, the help for Billy. And it really is just trying to help our teachers, our Billy assistants, teaching assistants who participate in this, just to look through a different lens for our students. They come to us in all varieties, shapes, and sizes, and abilities, and um, in different challenges. And we want to do what's best for those kids. And so that means you know thinking outside the box with some of the ideas. And so it was just a unique opportunity for um, you know, our, our, our staff to, to look through, look at our kids through a different lens. Try this again, here we go. All right, so moving into the four C's, um, you know, again, this is an area where we are constantly um, working on and trying to 
like someone has said before, you know, what is that lens we are using to help kids, um, you know, complete their tasks with, you know, the four C's. So I'm going to start in the top right with the three students there. This are, these are three fourth grade students who were participating in a mock trial. And this is a really good example of four C's because they had to collaborate with one, with each other. And then they had to think about, critically think about um, an idea and be able to defend that idea in front of their peers. Um, the, the creativity, well, then they had to communicate this idea to their classmates um, and again, defend their, their arguments. But the creativity piece comes in, you can see how they dress the part. Um, Matt's son goes to Dressel and he showed up in his uh, judge's gown because he was the uh, judge and juror. So he, uh, I, he, loved, he definitely loved that part. So um, down below that with those three kids with that tub, I have to give a shout out to uh, Mrs. DeClue, a second grade teacher. She definitely uh, took advantage of an awesome situation when there was like four or five inches of snow on the ground. So why not have the kids go outside and, and um, jump in there? So. She challenged them to collaborate on building an insulated habitat so their penguins could survive. So again, it was really neat for her to take advantage of the situation that was going on and uh, just seeing all the different designs these students came up with. And I'm gonna jump to the left with where you see all those playing cards. Uh, no, we're not gambling. Uh, we're not doing those types of things. But this, this was a foresty activity, but really what I love about it was a great example of our student work ethic and effort. Um, it started as just kind of stacking some cards and you could see the kids like they would fall down or the challenge was added to add another layer or add books on top. Um, but one thing in our design and lab class that we want to be pushing is that grit and that perseverance. And so in seeing kids fail, but stick with it, it's just an awesome sight to see. Um, I think this was a third grade class that that's working through that. So, you know, just uh, again, it's something, you know, we want to see in every room. And our design lab, we are the inaugural one. And, and it's it's taken away votes, I would say, for favorite class over PE, which is, um, whew. OK, so last, next, next, next slide is right here. Personalized learning. So we want to always be looking at growing the agency of our students and staff throughout the school year. So I'm just going to highlight a few of these um, photos on here. The top one is um, F, during our friendship celebrations this year, our third and fifth grade students decided and thought about what is a way that they can have an impact on their community but also how, do, how are they involved and going back to the idea of inclusion and belonging. And so the top left is our fifth grade students who collected food for a local food bank. And then that's a, below it is letters to students in the hospital from our third grade. So again, just going back to the idea of like, what's the impact they're having on the community that they live in and, and participate in on a daily basis. Uh, next one that I'm super stoked about, yes, stoked, I use the word stoked, uh, is that graph that's in there. And that is um, part of, soon to be a full-time part of our new math curriculum. And this is, it's called My Pathways. And this is a personalized individual feature that is really awesome for our kids because it gives um, feedback to them. It lets them know where they are and where they're going, but it also lets the teachers know that same thing. And so they can send out assignments. They can quickly go over it with the kid. So um, I'm excited that this is going to be available for all teachers next year because um, I really think it's going to continue to open up more pathways for our, our students and teachers. And last thing I'd like to highlight in the bottom left where you can see the blacktop that's part of our inclusion, equity, and diversity committee. And so once a month, they uh, host a um, walking podcast. And during that, they'll, they'll have a podcast. Teachers just bring their earbuds in. They can walk around in the school or, as you can see, this one is outside. And just it's a great way uh, for, for teachers to dig deeper into some of these topics and get some exercise at, at uh, the same time. So uh, any questions that you might have in regards to Dressel? All right, round three is coming. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Dr. Sherry Schluter. Uh, to you. Thank you, guys. I feel like we should have been clapping after each one. Anyway, <laughs> yay, thank you. Um, I guess the only comment I was going to make, I know your next group is coming up, is I love how we do the basics of reading, writing, arithmetic, and take care of the whole child. 
So thanks for doing both. Oh, oh, now it's green. Mr. Davitt, I'm going to attempt this, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It is such an honor to be here. First and foremost, I want to honor all of my colleagues. Just hearing about all the amazing things that, uh, that are happening in other schools, quite frankly, is inspirational. So I honor all of you and all the work that you do. It is an honor, I'm going to say that again, to tell you this evening to show you a snapshot of the learning that's been happening at Crestwood Elementary this school year. I'm going to try it. Yes. As we began this school year, we knew that meeting the social emotional needs of our students was paramount. Our incredible counseling team, Mrs. Ann Kleitsch and Mrs. Joy Long, developed a transition day for ARC students returning to in-person learning as well as new students to Crestwood. In the green framed picture, you can see our counseling team meeting with students during this day. In the orange framed picture, you can see an example of a class meeting, and these occur at the start of our day in every single classroom. This is an opportunity for us to create community and belonging within our classrooms and within our school. We want to empower our students to know that they can make a difference in the world around them. In the red framed pictures, you can see examples of our student leaders. Here you can see some of our greeter leaders who welcome our students to school each and every day, as well as one of our green thumb leaders who water plants throughout our school. Another way that we empower our students to make a difference was by completing service learning projects. In the blue framed picture, our fourth graders created over 200 snack packs with handmade valentines and they donated them to the Unhoused STL, which is a local agency that supports unhoused in the St. Louis area. Another example of the social and emotional learning that is happening at Crestwood is the launch of the Crestwood Coffee Cartel. We were approached by two fifth grade students within our school and they had a vision of collaborating with other students and staff members to have a coffee cart at our school. With the support of our incredible PTO and our partners at Special School District, we launched it. And in the yellow framed picture, you can see our coffee cart in action. I've noticed that others are inviting you to their schools. Please stop by on Friday and you can see our coffee cart in action as well. Oh, I did the next slide. Thank you, Colin. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> this year, we had a theme for each month that paired with our book of the month. For example, in the month of September, our theme was belonging. In the blue framed picture, you can see our third grade teacher, Miss Huvelman, reading her class, September's book of the month, You Are Amazing, I Am Amazing. This is one way that we were intentional this year to create a sense of belonging within our school. This year, we created the first ever Crestwood Black History Museum. Our students researched black individuals who have made a significant impact on our society. We decorated doors throughout our school to celebrate and inform by incorporating interactive features such as QR codes, clips, speeches, or music, depending on the individual selected. In the green framed pictures, you can see examples of the exemplary work that our students did for our Crestwood Black History Museum. Throughout this year, we took every opportunity to love on our staff at Crestwood. I want to honor and thank our Crestwood PTO for all the love and support and appreciation that they gave us this year. We know that when our staff is appreciated and valued and loved, they are going to be able to pour even more into the lives of our kids. This year we began Crestwood celebrations within our school and this was a way that we could celebrate each other school-wide. <clears throat> Students had the opportunity to give each other shout outs as well as receive shout outs from staff members. This was another way that we cultivated community at Crestwood and how we honor one another. Our students had numerous opportunities to engage in the four C's throughout the school year. The red framed picture shows Miss Engelbrecht's third grade students performing the true Cinderella story. Our students were able to be creative, collaborate, and then communicate their learning. The orange picture was a learning opportunity that our students had that incorporated all four C's. Our library and media specialist, Mrs. Beth Mazdra, she read Pumpkin Jack to all grades, and that is a story that incorporates the life cycle of a pumpkin. As a school, we wondered what would happen if we kept a pumpkin sealed all year long, and so we did just that. 
Our students kept journal entries about their observations and eventually the pumpkin seeds inside that decomposing pumpkin, they sprouted. And we're gonna plant them in our garden, which I'll show you in just a few moments. We are very thankful for the addition of Design Lab to our special rotations this year. In the blue framed pictures, you can see our students engaging in critical thinking and creativity as they made stop motion animation videos and they collaborated to make the tallest structure. The green framed picture shows our fourth grade students engaging in collaboration and critical thinking as they learn about circuits utilizing our MySci curriculum. Our Crestwood Environmental Club engaged in the four C's when they had an idea of how we could make a difference in the amount of environmental waste that we create as a school. This school year, we conducted an impact study at Crestwood regarding a sustainable cafeteria initiative. Instead of using styrofoam trays and plastic silverware, we used trays and silverware that were reused each and every day. And you can see those in the green framed pictures. Another example of the four C's at Crestwood is the creation of our Crestwood Community Garden, as you can see in these pictures here. Our Community Garden will provide all of our students an opportunity for hands-on learning and provide an area for outdoor learning at our school. Our garden is going to be a place where our community and our school can come together for a common purpose and goal. Finally, we provided personalized learning opportunities for our students in order to see them grow both academically and behaviorally. In the yellow frame picture, we see one of our students celebrating his success within Dreambox. Dreambox is a personalized learning tool that our students have access to so that they can practice their math skills. The orange framed picture above is an example of a think sheet. This is a personalized for students and it helps advance their social skills. The green framed picture shows one of our students using Epic, which is another personalized learning tool where our students can select to read books that are based on their instructional level. It is truly an honor to be here tonight to share with you all of these amazing things that are happening at Crestwood. Does anyone have any questions for me? Because that might be the only way I can talk more than five minutes. And I'm re refraining from hugging all of you because I'm probably not allowed to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Well, it is my high honor to introduce Dr. Angie Molman on her final learning report here at Lindbergh Schools. Yeah. You are absolutely <laughs> incredible, Angie, Aww. and we honor you for all that you've done at Concord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. You all are so kind. Well, I appreciate that, but I really want to give the credit to our school community. And when you see um, all of these smiling faces, you know, it is really just uh, the epitome of what Concord is. It's a very happy place to be, and it's always fun. So from counselor to librarian, we believe in educating the whole child, and we recognize the importance of social-emotional learning. Our new librarian, Ms. Calcaterra, incorporates various literature-based projects when classes visit the library. In this particular activity you see in green, students read the book Change Things and brainstormed ways how they could make their community a better place. We're also extremely fortunate to have such an incredible counseling team. Mrs. Niebuhr and Mrs. Herman can always be found checking in with students in the morning and reviewing their expectations for the day, as well as supporting student conversations during lunch bunch. From class meetings to restorative conversations, students learn how to identify their feelings through the zones of regulation and feel connected at Concord. Communication is at the core of everything we do. Here you can see evidence of two specific third grade writing projects. In Ms. Schrick's class, they wrote their own Magic Treehouse series. Some students even dressed up from a time period of their story. In Studio 3, third graders planned persuasive speeches on what they wanted to see changed at Concord. From longer recesses to wanting more playground equipment, these student presentations were incredibly convincing. You'll hear a lot about our um, science program in many of the slides that I'm talking about tonight. The students are always collaborating. On the left, you'll see first grade students who were investigating bird beaks. Now ours are not as advanced as the middle school where they're <laughs> creating there, but the groups use various tools to determine which item would function best as a bird beak. On the right, you'll see fourth graders that are testing out their Rube Goldberg machine projects. Working together, they designed a series of tasks that trigger a chain reaction. 
And a final example is our partner project with Mr. Lewis at Sparing. His eighth grade business design class wrote and published their own children's stories. Then they walked to Concord and finished their, sh their projects with different classes. It was collaboration at its finest. When peeking in to um, the classrooms, you're always going to be amazed at the creative uh, endeavors of our students. In one kindergarten class, they read a book called Gallimodo, which focused on transportation. The students designed a plan for their own method of transportation, and then they used various supplies that we call them. And if you go in the halls, you sometimes see them, and no, it's not trash, but these are materials that they use to build their own creation and then share with classmates. Our science curriculum really fosters student creativity, as can be seen in the top image. Our fourth graders conducted an experiment to determine what makes roller coasters go so fast. In this lesson, students designed paper roller coasters and released marbles down the roller coaster track to understand height, energy, and energy transfer. Our teachers seek many ways for students to explore their creative sides, as can be seen with these lucky fourth graders who had a field trip to made by the Magic House. This was an incredible experience that allowed these students to engage in a variety of authentic STEAM activities. And again, critical thinking is at the core of our lessons at Concord. On the top left, students can be seen participating in the final dinosaur dig. Using tools of the trade, they planned, designed, and created prototypes of tools that a paleontologist would use to unearth bones. Next, they had to test their prototype. If it failed, it was back to the revision board they went. Perseverance at its best. In the nest project, students created a bird's nest out of various materials. They had to determine if their nest would keep the eggs safe from harm. In addition to all these inquiry-based lessons that happen inside the classroom, students are always engaged in critical thinking during their library lessons. Here, you'll see students solving challenging problems as they work with Osmo kits, snap circuits, and coding. When thinking about personalized learning, in learning menus, you can see this across the board, even at the very younger grades. So this primary example is a must-do-may-do learning menu. While the students were engaged in the activities on their must-do and may-do list, the teacher was then able to call the students over to review or extend concepts, and this happens daily. In the intermediate example that you see, students take ownership of their learning by selecting from a choice of learning activities. As you can see, Concord Elementary School is one amazing place to learn and grow. Thank you for your time tonight, and now I would like to welcome our Director of the Gifted Program, Dr. Tracy bednarik Do you have any questions? No, you don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> you could go to the next slide, I don't know why that did that. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Molman? <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, I have the, the privilege of talking about a very wide grade span because our gifted program serves grades uh, basically 1 through 12. So um, I'll try to focus. But thank you again for um, just hanging with us all evening as we had a chance to share um, all the wonderful things happening at Lindbergh Schools. And also thank you for your continued support of the gifted program here at Lindbergh. So in recognition that gifted students often struggle with big emotions and are at an increased risk for anxiety, depression, and perfectionism, we added a part-time counselor to our gifted staff this year. Mrs. Dickinson's down there in the lower right corner. She's been an amazing addition to our team. She provides whole group lessons on social emotional learning topics specific to gifted students, runs support groups for students dealing with concerns such as anxiety or perfectionism, provides one-on-one -on -one counseling, and organizes support with interventions for students in the classroom so that those go from both their general ed classroom to their gifted services. For our social emotional learning in our elementary PEGS program, our students do community outreach, outreach through problem-based learning, such as our PEGS sandwich making for unhoused people, and you can see that in the upper right, uh, upper left, and our native garden project at Kennerly. 
and middle school students are designing a legacy project to impact the world. For example, one student shared with me that he is going to come up with ways to depolarize the two-party system in the United States government so more progress can be made on critical issues and thus improve the lives of all citizens. In Elementary Leap, several lessons incorporate SEL, such as Building for Others, that's a kaleidoscope, a student choice class. In this class, students design projects around the needs they see in their immediate environment and beyond. For example, they've designed and built fidgets for others to help with worry, anxiety, or boredom, and you can see their little fidget um, box there that students can choose to use. They've designed and built escape room clues and puzzles for others that allow um, their teachers to teach teamwork and cooperation. And their last project that they'll be doing this year, they will be building a model of an accessible playground based on various student needs, such as students who are in a wheelchair or who are blind. In our third grade theme class at LEAP, it is designed around the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal of reduced inequalities in the world. And so this class will um, culminate with a service field trip to LifeWise STL, where they'll um, be doing community service, as well as um, bringing a massive donation of socks and underwear to the organization. Our gifted program focuses on the unique SEL needs of gifted students, the need to be challenged, the need to connect with like-minded peers, and the need to develop self-awareness of what it means to be gifted and how one can use their gifts for the most good. Our four C's. So in LEAP, we incorporate content into our four C's, and in PEGS, we incorporate the four C's into our content. So recently in middle school PEGS, students organized a band tour for a band that they created. This interdisciplinary project between science, math, and humanities required students to look at the finances of a band tour, the science of music, the technology and algorithms behind a social media campaign, and the human resources needed for all the people involved in putting on a band tour, including the musicians, which can be a little hard to wrangle. They presented their plan for the band tour to a panel of potential investors. In elementary pegs, the students researched native and non-native plants to determine what plants would be best suited for a school garden. Their focus was on finding plants that would do well on their own in a hot Missouri summer and would not die quickly or become invasive. Once they selected their plants, they wrote persuasive letters to Mr. Thomas and the Kennerly PTO to convince them to select their plants for the school's garden improvement plan. In LEAP, everything we do is about the four C's, and through the learn, plan, create, and expand process, students utilize all of the four C's. In the picture on the left, you can see the Truman Middle School team and their functional human body model they created for their mini medical school thematic unit. So that's the upper left. Additionally, our LEAP teachers are always actively seeking grants to add to their integration of technology in their units. They have received grants from various organizations, including the Lindbergh Foundation and the NEA, to purchase additional 3D printers, a Glowforge, and several Spheros and Ozobot programmable robots. This past week, our fifth graders programmed their robots to compete in several different Winter Olympic events, and I think they're doing curling down there in that lower left picture. And then lastly, for personalized learning, I do want to speak to our targeted identification pathway and universal screening that we've implemented over the last three years and really have, this is our first year that it's really going and we feel um, like we know what we're doing as we run through the program. But um, we are now um, screening students in grades one through five for potential testing in the gifted program. And we do have alternative routes for students who have IEPs or um, who are from underrepresented demographic groups. So we've opened up multiple pathways to gifted identification, and that speaks to personalized learning. Students can be qualified for further screening by their fall FastBridge reading scores, iReady math scores, or their fall NWA reading or math scores. Additionally, first graders have the opportunity to qualify for further testing using a logic and reasoning assessment that's given to all first graders called the NNAT3. By the end of the school year, our gifted specialists will have given over 150 IQ assessments for the purpose of potential enrollment in the gifted program. Being part of gifted programming is one key toward personalized learning for students who need that extra challenge. 
In elementary pegs, our, our teachers use wind time to address students' needs and provide both support and extensions, similar to any other classroom here at Lindbergh. But they use our altitude digital learning system to embed student playlists where students have choice in how they want to learn new information and then how they want to share what they've learned with their teachers. Um, and that's an example of a playlist is up there on the, um, on the board. This works perfectly for our standards-based instruction, which we've been using for the past three years in PEGS. When a student has demonstrated mastery of a standard at one grade level, um, their elementary PEGS teacher can bounce them up to the next grade level. For our middle school gifted students, we've worked with their general education teachers to provide ongoing differentiation training and collaboration. This helps teachers use data to plan instruction around multi-tiers of student learning needs, from learning interventions to enrichment. And we will continue this middle school collaboration around multi-tiered systems of support to support appropriate challenge for all. In our middle school PEGS program, students develop prove-it projects to choose how they will demonstrate their learning, both with their content and their effective skills goal setting. So they also, at the beginning of each year, determine what executive functioning or social emotional learning goals they want to personally set, and then they work on prove-it projects throughout the year. Lastly, our high school LEAP Innovators class in our high school Gifted Student Advisory Council has allowed students to build on their strengths to develop their own passion projects. This past year, we had a student design a fully functioning jukebox, and you saw that picture um, from Dr. Cochran's presentation. And other students have worked together to plan a mentorship program for younger students um, throughout the Gifted program. Do you have any questions about Gifted programming? Tracy, I do have a question. Sure. Are we able to do the cardboard boat regatta this year? I don't think we have a pool available to us, so I don't think we're able to do the cardboard regatta this year, unless somebody wants to magically. <laughs> yeah. We're running I'm, out of time really, now. But I'm sad because I have an yeah. excellent box for a boat. Oh. <laughs> so I was going to donate it. We will still take your box because we have. Will. We always have uses for boxes. So Ooh, Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, we'll take your box, but it would be great to bring that back at some point because that mm -hmm. was really fun. I agree. Yeah. He left the room though, so <laughs> I have to tell him that later. Okay. Thank you. Tara, yeah. that's why I was going to say I know Joelle isn't here, but they all need a cardboard budget. Yeah. I mean, it's been pictured in every single picture. Maybe not you, Doug. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take the cardboard donations, but we need a budget for those safety cardboard cutters because those <laughs> are always getting used. So, yeah. All right. Well, I would like to introduce Doug Barton at this time, the director of our ARC program. Thank you, Dr. Bednar Humes. So ARC stands for Accelerated and Remote Courses, and it's the home for our virtual students, elementary students. Their teachers, Mrs. Ruschoff and Mrs. Castelli, have done an amazing job creating a multi-age virtual classroom built on standards-based and personalized learning. We also greatly appreciate the team at Kennerly and others around the district for supporting ARC students. ARC serves first graders through fifth graders. Bringing together students of different ages for learning creates special bonds and unique social-emotional learning opportunities. Those students are separated by distance. They are very close with each other. At the top left, uh, monthly ARC events provide unique learning experiences away from Zoom. Time for students to build friendships and opportunities to supply students with critical resources they need. At the bottom left, Friday afternoon socials give students time to connect, share, and teach each other what they're passionate about. Top right, morning and afternoon check-ins give students a chance to self-assess and express their feelings. And at the bottom right, this, this image is a great example of the positive and caring environment in our classes. Following a class project celebration, one of our fifth graders wanted to show his appreciation for the great work a first grader did. So he created a one minute animated digital story explaining why her work was the best. ARC students engage in the four C's through interdisciplinary, project-based learning, and opportunities in the community. Top left, ARC students celebrated their cultures while practicing their writing and photography skills by authoring a class cookbook of family recipes. Students collaborated to create all aspects of the cookbook. 
Bottom left, ARC students are also authoring an ARC yearbook. Similar to any other yearbook project, they've taken on leadership roles, including editor, writer, and photographer. Every child is contributing to building something they will cherish. And then to the right, this is just taken yesterday at Community Gardens, where ARC students and family members work together to plant 300 trees. Students learned how Forest Relief of Missouri, a non-for-profit organization, partners with communities around the state to provide trees to storm victims and urban revitalization projects. ARC teachers facilitate student growth by identifying where students are at, helping students understand their next steps, and providing individualized feedback and instruction to meet student needs. Bottom left, ARC teachers combine data from adaptive learning programs, benchmark assessments, and small group instruction to develop plans for individual student learning. And at the right, personalized learning is also about access in ARC. Uh, by creating pop-up libraries at our in-person events, we ensure that ARC students have ongoing access to a wide variety of physical books throughout the school year. Thanks again to the Lindbergh community for supporting our virtual learners the past two years. What questions do you have? I just want to point out, I think it's noteworthy that so many of our principals reference the challenges that our students have had over the past couple of years, as well as the challenges of teaching through a pandemic. Um, but they face those challenges as well. Um, they have remained instructional leaders at a time when there was a lot of managerial tasks that were absorbing their time, contact tracing, um, communicating in ways that they never had to communicate previously. So I think tonight's um, presentations are a testament to the fact that that learning is still at the core of what we're doing and finding opportunities to really engage and enrich the experiences of our students that are going to help propel them long into the future. Um, so I just want to thank all of you for doing such an amazing job every day and then sharing that journey tonight. I just want to say thanks to you guys. Lots of effort. You guys stayed on task, which was awesome because <laughs> you guys know my ADD will kick in. No, it was it was truly amazing what you guys are doing each and every day in those buildings with our kids. Um, you know, not everything that counts can be counted, and we saw lots of evidence of learning and high levels of learning, lots of critical thinking, lots of teamwork, those skills that are going to help our kids be successful in life. And as we, Tara, talked about, we will We'll talk about some of our academic data in July once we get through this round of assessments, but you saw a glimpse of some of the growth with NWEA and our iReady math that's showing that our um, students are moving in, in the right direction. A few of our principals had some of that in there. So I just, great job, guys. Thank you um, and for giving us time. Thank you, guys, your colleagues supporting your other colleagues in the back there. Um, really appreciate you guys sticking around for that. So, and then, oh, Kathy, go ahead. Sorry. Overall question for everybody really it's directed towards Tara. I know you all get together for meetings, but how often do you meet in each other's buildings to take those um, important learning walks? So those have paused during COVID. We're going to revisit those next year. We were in the process of revising what they look like to align them more to compass goals anyway, pre-COVID. So this is giving us an opportunity to refresh. The one thing that we, I mean, we're constantly in buildings. So, you know, having those, those conversations, Craig and Ronnie and Jill and myself, and as well as other cabinet members are having those walks kind of more informally, but we don't have the universal walks happening. No, and I think, let me, let me the, change the question a little okay. bit. So how often do you pretend you're principal so they can visit each other's schools? Ooh, I like that. That's what idea. I mean. I don't mean you. I know you guys are in the buildings, you know, when it comes to the people in this building are in the buildings. I, I, 100%. No, and that really goes back to reinstituting those learning walks that we had done pre-COVID. Okay. So those will come back next year with a renewed purpose and focus in our work. Um, but I also think that having time together um, to collaborate as professional learning communities, as administrators, is also really important. So really prioritizing that time. I know even just practicing for tonight, you know, there's a lot of, oh, yeah, this is a great idea. And, and being able to see that That's visually, even when you can't do it in person, is, is a beneficial process. So to that being in buildings, I do want to highlight something. I want to give Dr. McKinney and Joelle um, a shout out. They do is a monthly or quarterly, your monthly meeting. Um, 
human resources and finance pick a building and they go there and they're hosted by the building they do they walk the building they get to put names with faces you know those two departments it can be very easy for them just to get over here and not have that personal connection with buildings so kudos to brian and joel for taking their team out and then best team communications are they're always out because they tell our story right they, they go out and they <laughs> capture the great things that you guys are doing each and every day um, in our buildings so i just wanted to to end with that there no thank you yeah but y'all are still our bosses i meant visit each other and for me to come take all the stuff i stole and wrote down yeah thanks all right any other questions all right well again thank you to our building principals and our directors for kind of showing us a glimpse of what's going on in our buildings every day and again as dr lake said in july we'll be looking at kind of that academic and assessment data at our july workshop so we all look forward to that all right, so we will move on to adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn board workshop 1551? So uh, motion by Mike. Second. Second by Christy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, board workshop 1551 is adjourned. I was trying to get her first.